together to begin our celebration to continue in our Easter joy. of our Lord Jesus, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Once again, brothers, good morning, sisters, to this beautiful eighth day of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. We continue in the celebration of Jesus' victory over sin, over death, and in that victory, his outpouring of merciful love mercy and forgiveness for the whole world. We open our hearts to the Lord, we who are sharers in this mercy through baptism. And through these Sundays of Easter, we are called to remind ourselves that in baptism, we were born with Christ. Let us use this holy water, which was used last night to welcome into the church 27 young boys and girls They've been preparing for their baptism, their confirmation, and their Eucharist. We use this water now to remind us that we too are sons and daughters of God. 
Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. For us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, we praise you for this holy water. You created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and <clears throat> quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in this bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who this Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will pass among you, Deacon and I, uh, sprinkling this holy water. I invite you to make the sign of the cross and renew for yourself your baptismal promises. Make us worthy 
to share at the table of his kingdom, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been baptized by whose spirit we have been reborn and by whose blood we have been redeemed through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us open our hearts now to God's holy word. So not quite the same crowd as last week. There are still some people standing, so if you have room in your pew, could you open up a little space so that those who are standing could find a seat? We do have enough space for everybody. We just got to tighten up a little bit, okay?
perfect. Really, there must be real Christians here. We open our hearts to God's Word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possession was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give first letter of St. John. <clears throat> Beloved, everyone who believes that, Christ, that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. 
The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, 
and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. the process of formation. Seminarians are often asked to spend the time, the pastoral year, in the parish, learning the cycle of parish life and all the elements that go into being a shepherd, a pastor for of that parish. We've been blessed to have seminarian Scott Borba with us throughout the past uh, few months. And as part of that experience of priesthood life, it is a preparing and delivering a reflection on the scriptures, weekdays and the Sunday experience. I've asked Scott today to prepare a reflection on these scriptures and to share with us this good news on this Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us open our hearts to the Lord who speaks to us through these words. Good morning to you all. The church celebrates the Sunday of Divine Mercy on the second Sunday of Easter each year, the last day of the Easter octave. On this day, we contemplate the fullness of the Paschal mystery, Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. The basis of the whole Easter mystery is God's merciful love. From the beginning of creation, throughout scripture, and most perfectly in the life, passion, death, and resurrection of his son Jesus, God has been revealed as love itself. In his infinite love for us, God desires nothing more than to forgive our sins and offer us his mercy. I am love and mercy itself. There is no misery that could be a match for my mercy. Neither will misery exhaust it, because as it is being granted, it increases. The soul that trusts in my mercy are most fortunate, because I make myself take care of it personally. At St. Faustina's Diary, number 1273. Our Lord appeared to St. Faustina on April 30th, 1931. He requested that this feast be established in the church to propagate God's divine and incomprehensible mercy, to tell the world that no sin is beyond God's forgiveness and that whomever asks for his mercy will receive it. Jesus desired us to understand that his mercy is endless. And as he confirmed to St. Faustina, it is his number one attribute. As you have made noticed, the reading today are all about God's mercy, the necessity for strong faith, and our need for the forgiveness of our sins. Today's first reading recounts the early Christian community's new zeal, love, and spirit. The early believers were united, sharing possessions and resources. The apostles' powerful testimony about Jesus' resurrection earned them high regard. They distributed funds from sold properties to meet everyone's needs, ensuring no one was in need. The response serial psalm repeats several times, his mercy endures forever. God revealed his mercy first and foremost by sending his only begotten son to become our savior and Lord through his suffering, death, and resurrection. 
Divine mercy is also given to us in each celebration of the sacraments, all instituted to sanctify us, especially that of reconciliation and the most holy Eucharist. In the second reading, having strong faith in Jesus as the Christ shows we are born of God. Loving God and his children means obeying his commandments, which are not burdensome if you truly love him. Our faith in Jesus as God's Son overcomes the world, guided by the Spirit of truth. Finally, in today's Gospel, Thomas was not present when Jesus appeared, and he refused to believe the disciples when they told him the Lord had appeared to them. Thomas needed to see to believe. So Jesus returned and revealed himself eight days later on the octave of Easter. Jesus showed Thomas his hands and his side, saying, Do not be unbelieving, but believe. While commissioning them as ministers of the sacrament of reconciliation and God's mercy through the Holy Spirit and blessing future believers who wouldn't yet see but believe in him. How often have we doubted the Lord like Thomas? How often have we hidden in fear, unable to bear the shame of our mistakes and failures? What sins have we painfully buried in our hearts rather than exposing them to the healing light of God's mercy? Have we failed to confess and seek reconciliation for sins of adultery, violence, hatred, or participation in abortion? Have we rejected the church's teaching on contraception, sexuality, or marriage? Have we hardened our hearts, giving ourselves to envy, greed, or dishonesty? When I was in my previous life, 23 years ago, I was a businessman. Actually, I was a businessman for 23 years in Los Angeles before my conversion and my entrance into formation. I remember that I was working on a tremendously big deal with my business partners in New York. I found out later that I was cut out of the deal right when the deal was being signed. So there was a loophole in the contract, and my business partners decided to execute that loophole, cutting me out completely. I decided that day that I was going to do everything possible to go ahead and fight for myself, fight for my right of justice. I was in my car when I heard the news and I started praying the rosary to our Blessed Mother and to our Lord, specifically asking for help. At that moment, I felt this great sense of peace and mercy within my heart. I felt God telling me at that time that He was having mercy on me at that minute because if I would have received this great, great gift of business and money, that I would have further lost my soul and never had regained it, that I would have been even a more prideful person than I was, and that this was God's great mercy to me if I would trust in Him. At that moment, all I could do was give myself completely in trust of Him and to move forward in life. It did take quite a long time for me to get over it and also to forgive others. But because I trusted in God and His mercy, I am here with you today. I am here with you, the happiest man I have ever been in my life. And I'm here to do God's will and to show the mercy of God to everyone that I meet because God has been so merciful to me. While God wants nothing more than to give us his mercy in order to receive it, we must admit that we are sinners in need of God's forgiveness. We must also admit that we, we need save, saving. We must be willing to look at the ways we have failed to love God and our neighbor so that God can raise us to the heights of his love through his great mercy. Our Lord tells us that no sin is unforgivable and no sinner is beyond redemption. We have all failed and need God's mercy. For this very reason, Christ suffered, died, and rose again. He came to offer us his infinite love and mercy 
which we can receive in the sacrament of reconciliation. When we enter into the confessional and seek God's forgiveness, Christ breathes on us as he did his disciples in the gospel, wiping away our sins and offering us his peace. We don't need to hide in fear or shame. Christ's mercy is freely given to a repentant heart. He will take away our pain and replace it with his peace and his love. If we ask for God's peace, we must show peace and forgiveness to everyone else we meet in our lives. We can't live together as members of this Christian community without such forgiveness. Contrary to worldly beliefs, being merciful does not make you a weaker person. It rather shows the strength of your inner resolution to do the right thing and to show love and forgiveness as our Lord and Savior did to us. Let us all learn to show mercy, forgiveness, and compassion to all we meet daily. This is the only way to conquer our world's wickedness and restore peace to our troubled hearts and society. May the love and mercy of Christ and our Blessed Virgin Mother be with you now and always. Amen. God shows us his mercy by calling us in baptism to become his sons and daughters. As we continue this Easter season, we renew our baptismal faith. To that end, I ask you, brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, and was buried, who rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body? Do you believe in life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the church, which we proudly profess in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In this faith, we make known to God our needs, trusting in God's everlasting mercy. To each of the petitions today, I invite you to respond. Jesus, I trust in you. For the whole church, that all who believe in the risen Christ may follow him faithfully, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. For an end to prejudice, war, violence in our world, that Christ's gift of peace may settle in the hearts of all the people, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. For those who, like Thomas, do not yet believe, but see Jesus through our words and actions of faith and charity. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. For our parish, that we may see the Lord in the signs he has left us, giving us new life in baptism and nourishing us in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. For all who suffer in any way, the sick, 
the dying, the grieving. May the risen Christ give them grace and strength. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. For the repose of the soul of Alberto and Christopher Campos, and for all those who have recently died from our parish, Augustino Tellis Jr., Dalia Lopez, Jose Sabalas, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. And for that soul, wherever he or she may be in the world, who feels most abandoned, most alone, most beyond God's loving mercy, in this Easter season, he or she may come to know the great love of God and his mercy, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Gracious and loving God, you have renewed us in the waters of new life. Grant us the strength each day to profess our faith in word and deed, trusting in your mercy, who live and reign forever and ever. Please be seated, friends, as we prepare our gifts and prepare the altar where we meet the Lord Jesus. Please join in singing our offertory song number 407 at the Lamb's High Feast, number 407.
Great sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the our duty and our salvation at all times yet more glorious at all times to acclaim you O Lord but above all to love you today yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death. And by rising restored our life. Therefore we overflowing with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim without end. rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and work of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Peter and Paul and all the apostles and martyrs, Saint Anne, Saint Faustina, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered here before you this morning. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy with them forever the fullness of glory through Christ Jesus our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Soul of Jesus, sanctify me. Body of Jesus, save me. Blood of Jesus, wash me. Oh, good Jesus, hear me. Hide me within your sacred wounds. O oh, sacred heart of Mary, plead for me and love me. Amen. Join in singing our communion song number 836, Anis Angelicus, number 836.
And our second collection this morning will be for St. Anne's School of Support. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday in God's peace. Remember to take home your bulletin. You know what's going on in the parish. Thank you for your support in that second collection for our Catholic school, which is coming up on her 100th anniversary this year. Also a, a little plug there, the young people there have been preparing for their annual uh, showstopper, right? Beauty and the Beast. 
They had their inaugural run last night and Friday and Saturday. You have one more opportunity to catch them next Friday and next Saturday. Tickets are outrageously priced at $5 and $10 <laughs> apiece to support the school. But I tell you, you will not be disappointed. If you're looking for good theater, these young people have good voices and uh, good dancing skills. They've done a great job. So if you want to see a great program, give a call and uh, go see them next weekend. After Mass today, you'll find out in the plaza there a whole array of goodies. The Altar Society is having their annual bake sale to raise funds for their ministry, which is upkeeping of these temples of ours, our church here, St. Anne's, the missions, all that they do to keep the buildings beautified and ready for worship. They're also open to receiving new members. If you have a little time that you can volunteer to help as an Altar Society member, mostly there are some goodies for sale, home-baked goods. There's the Scoops ice cream and the cupcake truck. Come all the way from Visalia and Hanford and some good eats out there. So most of your profits there will go to support the Altar Society ministry. And this afternoon, being Divine Mercy Sunday, we will gather at 2.30 at St. Anne's to celebrate the Holy Hour. There with the Blessed Sacrament exposed for adoration, we'll pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet and receive benediction. I invite you to come and join us if you have the time this afternoon at 2.30. We'll also be blessing any new Divine Mercy images that you may have acquired through the year. So. Make it a wonderful Easter Sunday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you his heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in our homeland in heaven. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. join in singing our closing hymn number 566 holy god we praise thy name number 566 saint michael the archangel